in the first testament it seemed there's a pattern in if not all almost all of the stories we have when god call a prophets it seems that nobody wants to do the job nobody wants to accept god's call and some of us might be surprised about this because prophets are supposed to be the spokesperson for God. So we assume that's that's a very good position with with a good boss, I would say. And the prophets uh, deliver inspired speech, powerful statement. We read their texts in our Bible and it's very inspiring because they defend essential value like protection of the vulnerable the poor the widow social justice so what's not to like what seems to be the issue the problem here well when we continue to read our Bible we discover that nobody seems to like God's prophet especially those in power the powerful of this world that often persecuted them Nobody seems to even listen to them. They're saying, don't do this, and the people keep doing it. And maybe that's why there's a, a constant need of them in the narration of our Bible. This is maybe why being called to be a prophet, prophet to be a prophetic voice, it's a mixed blessing. It's, it's like a old good news, bad news joke. It's like, and it's like you say, oh, yay, I'm called. Oh, no, I'm called. In the same time, it's a very important job. At the same time, it's a very difficult job. And God still called people today. And not what we might assume like special and perfect people that have, have everything organized in line and they're made up for some um, it's like the call of the prophet Isaiah sometimes people feel they're they don't feel adequate for this job they're not worthy of this call it's uh, they're not up to this task he said no I cannot go that, not me it feels like when we speak with people, we invite them to our church and said, well, let's get my life in order before and then I will go to your church. Now I'm just a mess, so you don't want me. It's in the case of Isaiah, in the case of many prophets, in the case of many of us today. God replies, said, no, 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 no. That's not the way I work. Because God says, I know you. I know all everything you have done everything and i'm still calling you today to make a difference in this world i'm i'm calling you as you are today and god tells us it's 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 gonna it's gonna i'm not gonna lie to you okay and uh, it's gonna be hard it require a lot of hard work not gonna be easy but I, God, believe that you're up to this. I believe you can do this. Do you want to go? And that's what is very interesting. God does not seem to be forcing anyone to it. There's this call, but it's not a marching order. In the case of Isaiah, I said, who will go to do this? Not Isaiah shut up and 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 do it no no that's not how god god offer the opportunity and it's up to us to answer and many of us have done like isaiah here i am god if you believe that i can do it if you believe i can help in this world well i will try to bring my contribution still today god is calling and not just calling to ordain the order of ministry to clergy. We are all called one way or another in our lives. In our work, where we work, where we study, uh, with our family, everywhere we go. In everything we do, we have this calling. 
And texts like the call of Isaiah, it's a reminder of all the excuse we can find and, and invoke. And God's still saying, I've heard it all. I've heard it all. I'm still calling you. Do you want to come? It's up to us to answer that question. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette, and until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.